Hello and welcome to the second video in my masterclass series on MIDI layers. And in this video we're going to talk about layer sequences. So as you can see there, we can now have per layer MIDI sequences, and this opens up a whole new ball game. So let's dig in and have a look how this works. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to take the existing project and delete all the layers in the project, and then we're going to add a single new layer. Now if we press the options button to open the layer options panel uh, I want to draw your attention to this new option down in the bottom right called Harmony. Now to demonstrate this I'm going to change the uh, output port uh, to be an instrument of choice. And I can change the Harmony to create a Harmony at a specific semitone offset. Notice this new icon in the top uh, right corner of the uh, this display, the little keyboard icon, which now opens up the MIDI sequencer. Now this sequencer is specific to uh, layer A1 and must be enabled using this power button in the top right corner. Now if I press a note that triggers this layer, the sequencer will play. Now considering I want to create a sequence from scratch, this uh, default sequence is no use. So I'm going to press the clear button and delete the sequence. Now anyone familiar with uh, my sequences will know that you tap and hold a particular note position to add a note. So let's just add a few notes in here, uh, various uh, positions within this uh, sequence and just see what it sounds like. Now it's important to note that these numbers in this left hand column correspond to semitone offsets from the original note you entered. So uh, 0 would be 0 offset, 2 would be plus 2 semitones, minus 2 would be minus 2 and so on. Now by simply tapping on these numbers in this left hand column uh, we can change the offset values that are within there. So you can see that that has a, uh, reveals a little slider and we can go up and down to uh, plus 24 semitones and minus 24 semitones from the original uh, input note. Now if you ever want to reset that you can just tap in this header column here and uh, this menu will appear. And you'll notice on this menu there's a GM drums option. And when I pick that GM drums option, you'll notice that the offsets turn into uh, static notes. And I happen to have a copy of DigiSticks with a GM compatible drum kit on port 2. So I'm going to change to port 2 and uh, let's just see if we can create a simple drum beat as a pattern. So let's go back uh, to the sequencer now and uh, clear this uh, current sequence and 
I think the the top track is actually the bass drum, the next one's a snare, then I think comes a hi hats. So what I've done is I've chosen a set of uh, useful um, uh, GM drum kit sounds and uh, uh, map them for you by default but you can change them uh, if you wish you just need to tap on that header and you can uh, change the fixed note to any other fixed note now by default it's too slow so I'm going to alter the speed to uh, play 16th and uh, see how that sounds Now every time I press a key that sequence will start, but it will start immediately. And as you saw, regardless of the note I pressed, it will always pay to play the same fixed set of notes. Now if we want to sync to the host, we need to enable this little link icon at the top here. And that ensures that we play in time with the host. I just want to point out that uh, if you tap and hold on any of these, uh, fixed uh, items within this header column we can change uh, from uh, relative values to absolute values uh, quite simply and also if we just a single tap we can change the value of the note in there so you can pick any of the 127 midi notes now with that in mind let's go back and create a second layer and um, Resize that layer so that it takes up the full keyboard as the original one did. Now when we bring up the sequencer, don't forget to enable the host sync and power it on. We can hear the sequence once we start playing a note. Now if we press the menu button in the top corner of this window, you'll see we can load and save sequences. We can copy and paste sequences. We can tell a sequence to be monophonic and we can tell it to start on a beat and that is very very important. Now by default start on beat is turned on per layer but if you turn it off for instance we're doing eighth notes here so if it's turned off it could start on an eighth note which is kind of a halfway through a beat. Now the other thing tucked away in here is a randomized function which can be used to randomize monophonic or polyphonic sequences at various complexities. Now if you want to change the length of the, uh, the sequence it's easy to do using this length option at the top here. Now anyone that's used uh, Four Pockets apps before will probably be uh, familiar with this but if you double tap on a note it will remove the note so if I double tap this note it's gone. I can add a note by uh, long pressing and then dragging so you see that I actually added a note that was two elements two divisions wide and if we drag up and down uh, we can alter the velocity too. Now we can tap and hold on the groove uh, button at the top to actually add uh, a, a specific amount of swing, say, to, to this uh, sequence. And we can also use the gate function to shorten notes. Now in previous versions of MIDI layers we only had 12 scenes available to us but now in version 1.02 we can have um, uh, multiple uh, banks of 12 scenes so you access those using the little uh, bank button at the top right corner of the screen. Now you'll notice that just changing bank here does not actually change the scene, so be aware of that. So if I go to bank B and press uh, scene 1, we go to bank B scene 1. If I go to bank C and press scene 3, we're on bank, three, uh, bank C scene 3 and so on. 
So now with the additional uh, six banks of 12 scenes, we should have plenty for any occasion. Now the last thing I want to go over today is some changes to the way mute groups work, especially with the new layer sequences. Now by default, whenever we engage a mute group, it will not, it will cue that mute change until we release all notes and then you'll see the mute group switch. And if I disable that mute group, again, it will not switch until I release my finger. Now we can change that default behavior by heading off to the settings and in here you'll find a new option, uh, quick switch mute groups. And if we turn that on, things are a little bit different. Let me demonstrate. Hopefully, hopefully you noticed that I've just uh, held my finger down uh, during this uh, switching process and um, the mute groups are automatically disabling and enabling the sequences on the fly. So that's just about it for this masterclass video. Uh, hope you liked it. Don't forget to uh, thumb up the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. See you next time.